The PS5 Pro was just announced and from all things that we currently know, it's hard to imagine anyone being extremely hyped about this or even satisfied <laughs> with what we're getting. So I do have a bit of a rant. It's not just about the PS5 Pro in its current state, but it's also about Sony and the whole console market going forward. What the PS5 Pro actually means for the consumer and what it means for Sony, because I feel like a lot of people are misinterpreting this. The take I've read online quite a lot was that Sony is just getting overconfident. They're getting cocky, you know? They just are winning so much in the console market. They can just charge you $700 for this. They don't care, <laughs> right? They can charge you $700 for a mid-gen refresh without a disk drive. And from my perspective, that's not really getting cocky. It's more like an act of desperation for Sony. But let's get into it. I don't have too many hot takes about the console itself, like most things have already been said, but I do have a few points I want to touch upon. First of all, we have to talk about the absolute audacity, the absolute disrespect Sony has for their customer base. If you have bought a PS5 already, they simply look you in the eye and go, oh yeah, well, you have bought games physically, of course, you have your games library with like 20 games, but you're not going to use it unless you pay us another 80 bucks for an external disk drive, which is just, that's insane. This is like Apple levels of scamming customers. Especially when you're realizing that the console you could have gotten for $200 less actually has more features than this premium model. I think this is now the point where I can reiterate the upgrades the PS5 Pro will have. It will have a bigger GPU, it will have faster memory, and it will have more storage. The CPU will stay the same, so games like Space Marine 2 for example, which is a recent example of a game that's pretty much CPU limited, will not run any better on the PS5 Pro, which is kind of disappointing. And 2 terabytes of storage is kind of nice, but in my honest opinion, the base model should have had 2 terabytes to begin with. Because for modern video games, 2 terabytes really is almost nothing. Like what? Call of Duty is 500 gigabytes now if you want to have the complete content. Like, it's ridiculous. 1 terabyte simply gets you not very far. And 2 terabytes would have been a reasonable base point for the current console generation. And I feel like the PS5 Pro, especially because it doesn't have a disk drive, should have had 4 terabytes. You might say this is insane and this is asking too much, but in terms of what the actual consumer gets in, uh, in value, storage has simply dwindled in value because games are just that insanely big nowadays. So yeah, 2 terabytes should be the baseline, 4 terabytes would have been nice. And when talking about reduced value, we also have to talk about the increased graphical power of the PS5 Pro. The PS5 is a powerful machine, but it still cannot run dedicated games steadily on 60 FPS. I've played Final Fantasy 16, for example, and the performance mode is not all that great. It's sometimes hitting 60 FPS, but more often than not, it's closer to 40 and sometimes 30 FPS. And this is simply not acceptable. If I use the performance mode, I want to play on 60 FPS. But I'm not using the performance mode if the 60 FPS cannot consistently get hit. So I actually preferred the 30 FPS, which at least were rock solid in the graphics mode. And again, the PS5 is not a weak console. That's not really the problem. The problem is that developers simply try to wring out more graphical fidelity than the console is capable of doing. And in my opinion, this problem won't really change with the PS5 Pro. It will change initially, because the PS5 Pro will run all the games that have been designed for the PS5. But once games roll out with the PS5 Pro in mind, I feel like we are going to run into the same problem again. Laggy 60 FPS or stable 30 FPS. You can maybe even make the case that Sony is actively hurting their base model customer base because newer game releases will simply target the performance of the PS5 Pro and not the base model. So maybe subsequent releases will only run in 30 FPS on the base model. 
This is of course just speculation, but to me that is more realistic than simply having a better and enhanced version for the PS5 Pro, which now will run on 60 FPS for reals this time. Further evidence for that is the introduction of PSSR, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, which is just their fancy term for their AI upscaling model. Sony knows that developers will simply try to cram more and more detail into their games, even if the console cannot really handle it. So they try to circumvent that problem by simply rendering it in a lower resolution and then upscaling it. In my opinion, that's not really solving the problem, it's simply masking it, but I guess it's better than nothing. Now, the reason why I think the PS5 Pro reveal is so interesting is because it tells us two things. One about consoles, in general, and the other one about Sony and their current market situation. In regards to consoles, it's very interesting that we have been promised a true 4K experience basically since the release of the PS4 Pro, so that's since 2016. But we were never really in a position where this was the reality. They always promised true 4K, but even the PS5 is still upscaling and the PS5 Pro will most likely do that as well, so games aren't even running natively in 4K. The other thing that's been promised were the 60 FPS or even 120 FPS on the PS5, which again it technically can do, but the reality is just that almost no games run at this frame rate. It's even funnier when you realize that Sony tried to scam their customers into believing they were buying an actual 8K capable console. It's only recently that they've removed the 8K from the packaging, so I'd be highly doubtful of any claims coming from Sony regarding their new console that this one is going to have 4K and 60 FPS, but this time we mean it. The much more interesting conclusion you can draw from the reveal, however, is that Sony is actually backed into a corner and the reveal of the PS5 Pro is more of an act of desperation than anything else. To give a little bit of context to that take, I've read online from many different people that they think Sony has won the console wars and that's simply the reason why they can raise prices that much. But I think that couldn't be further from the truth, especially when you look at how well Nintendo is doing. Yes, it's true, Sony is beating Microsoft, but Nintendo is beating Sony much harder than they're beating Microsoft. Of course, I'm aware that the Switch is the much cheaper option and it's also been out for longer, so it's not really a one-to-one -one comparison. However, I truly believe that Nintendo is making more profit with their system than Sony does. And that's for two reasons. The first one is that while the console is cheaper to buy, it's also cheaper to manufacture, so in the end the profit margins should be roughly the same. The other reason, however, is that Nintendo primarily sells first-party titles, so all the money they make of those just gets funneled into their own pockets again. And when you then consider the fact that their games don't have crazy high production costs, are still selling oftentimes for 60 bucks and don't really go on sale, I think their margins are pretty good on those. And it's not just that I think the margins are better, how many PS5 exclusives are actually out there? I mean, we can pull up the list again, it's always going to be funny when we look at that, but really, how many games are even relevant within the Sony system? Out of relevant Sony franchises that got a fairly recent release, we have the Horizon series, the new God of War games and the Spider-Man games. Now, I'm personally not a huge fan of these games, but they do have a certain fan base. However, you can buy all of these games on Steam nowadays. I can absolutely appreciate them bringing out these games on PC, but I think the reason why Sony even did it in the first place was because they're unsatisfied with how much money they made back on those games. Your install base will always limit how many games you can sell, and unless you're Mario Kart 8, most people owning your system will not buy your game. But reaching out to a new install base might also hurt you in the long run. The PS5 almost has no exclusive games. You've seen the Wikipedia page, it's become a meme. And rightfully so. If you own a gaming PC, there aren't all that many compelling reasons to buy a PS5. And Sony knows that. But Sony needs to make money from their PlayStation brand because that's the only brand they really have. When is the last time you've seen someone with a Sony smartphone? 
or a Sony TV or I don't know a Sony car radio. They have a lot of different eggs in a lot of different baskets but none of them are as profitable as PlayStation. And if PlayStation goes down, in my opinion Sony goes down. So what's their solution to all of that? They need to make money on the hardware. Because the software isn't selling as much as needed to carry the entire brand, they need to make money on the hardware. That's the reason why they increased the prices on the PS5. That's the reason why the PS5 Pro is going to be so expensive. Sony needs to make money off the consoles themselves. And this is the point where we have to talk about Microsoft, because in your mind you're probably screaming, but Salmo, Microsoft is much worse off than Sony. How can Sony actually lose the console wars? And here's the thing, Microsoft is not in the console market in the same way Sony is. Microsoft is selling you software and they offer you hardware in case you want it. Sony is selling you hardware but they don't offer enough software to warrant the purchase. I know this is moving the goalposts a bit, but stay with me. I'm absolutely convinced that Xbox does not need the physical console in order to be profitable. They are going to wait until the Game Pass makes money and this is the point where they try to push the Game Pass onto the competitors consoles. Microsoft's game plan is to parasitize the competition and I truly think this might work. I'm not a fan of the Game Pass, I don't think that streaming is the future I want to see in gaming but I do believe that there's a possibility this might be the right business decision. And out of both competitors who is more likely to survive the Game Pass and the subsequent loss of income through game sales? Is it the competitor with an accessible price point of under $200 and a large array of first party titles with some of the biggest IPs in gaming or will it be the $700 console without exclusive games? Yeah, the answer isn't all that difficult for me. People usually buy consoles for one of two reasons. Either they buy them for their accessibility, both in price point and in ease of use, or they buy them for the exclusive games. But when your console neither is competitive in its price point, nor offers a good amount of exclusive games, why would people buy it? Sony's answer seems to be that they're charging you a premium for the best possible fidelity. But if you would truly care about that, you wouldn't be looking at consoles in the first place. Video game consoles serve as an entry point for most casual gamers, but once you try to seek out peak fidelity, you're at a risk of losing what made consoles popular in the first place. The average person probably cares more about good exclusives and a cheap price than they do about increased background sharpness. I don't think that the audience Sony is targeting with the PS5 Pro, which is invested enough in video games to care about minor graphical details, while not being invested enough to care about a gaming PC, is big enough to really make it a success. Especially when you consider the prices. I know that you can adjust it for inflation and then it seems less bad than it actually is or whatever, but the reality for most people is that their salaries didn't get adjusted for inflation. And with everything getting more expensive, yeah, this is objectively more expensive for people and less people are going to be able to afford it. But what is Sony going to do? They don't have enough first party titles to really make the money back that way, so they have to increase the profit margins for their hardware. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a losing strategy. If you really want to revitalize the brand, simply give us good exclusives. Diversify your games lineup a bit, you know, don't make every single game a cinematic over the shoulder action adventure. And maybe make a few games for which you don't have to spend 200 million dollars to produce them. But hey, maybe I will eat my words and the PS5 Pro will become a huge success. Who knows? So what about you? Will you get a PS5 Pro or are you rather in the same boat as I am and you're not really interested? Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next ride.